All right guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna go ahead and keep on moving along with our series. Now, so far we've done box offsets, we've done offsets. We're gonna continue with the offset portion of this and then we're gonna jump the 90s you know, later on and then kicks, so on and so forth. So with this, basically, um, I'm gonna try not to have a long drawn out conversation with you guys about this because like I said, a lot of people don't like hearing all these stories. What y'all think about this crazy deal I got going on? Pretty crazy, huh? Hopefully the next time you guys see me, this won't be so massive. Anyway, so with the three-point saddle, basically, why do you need them and when do you use them? So a lot of people, <laughs> I've seen a lot of electricians say this is the hardest band known to man, and they will bypass it and do a four-point saddle. Now, both offsets or bends have a purpose. Now, the purpose of a three-point saddle is to get over something round. Now, believe it or not, I have seen people use a three-point saddle to get over like a beam. And I'm like, okay, it works, yes, but it looks. So, having said that, let me show you what I use it for. Okay, so if you're, let's say you're on a construction site and you got a pipe to go over, whether it be a piece of conduit, plumbing pipe, fire suppression system, whatever it may be, whatever is round, that is basically the only time I would use it. Now, if you master this, and this is going to take you some time because this was one of the hardest bends that I have ever used in my life. It works good and looks good. Now I'm going to tell you this, when you get it and you do it right, it looks excellent. But this particular bend, when I do it especially, now I'm not going to show you this on camera, but I can assure you of this. When I do it, there will be dog leg in it. And I, it takes me a few minutes to get it right. But, you know, I would rather spend a few minutes getting a bend look beautiful than putting some crazy four-point saddle that you really don't even need. And you're taking a lot of space and it looks like crap on a white rag, basically. Um, if you do it right, it looks great. Now, the bends are this. What you have to do is you have to measure with your tape measure from wherever it is, like if this was the, if this was the wall, to the top. So let's just say it's three inches, okay? So basically, the measurement would be two and a half times three, which will be seven and a half. Now, I'll explain all this later. I'm just letting you know what you do. So basically, you measure up here, you times whatever your obstruction is uh, by 2.5. Now, I like to give myself a little more leeway. So um, let's say it was seven and a half inches from my mark to mark. I will take that back either a quarter or another half inch, so it'll be eight inches. Just because I don't like it super flush on my whatever it may be, whether it's sprinkler pipe or whatever. I like having that little gap. Now, some electricians like it tight, and that's fine. Me, personally, I don't like it like that. But everybody's different. So uh, let's go ahead and measure this, because I don't know what it is. Um, you know, this is an inch and a half piece of PVC. Uh, we're going to measure now. I have this wonky table here that, you know, well, you guys know. It's got a big <laughs> hump in it, so my bins don't look right now. I know you're probably saying, gosh, you probably made enough money to buy your table by now. Well, yes and no. This table was free, so I'm just saying. All right, so I'm going to keep my ugly mug out of this, this whole entire um, scene. So now these measurements are going to be exactly the same, whether it's half inch, three quarter, one inch, so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and measure this and see. So see what we got here. All right, we got one and three quarters of an inch. See if you guys can see that, basically. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move it up to two inches. All right, so we need to times two times 2.5, which is five inches, all right? Pretty easy, right? Now, how do you do this on a piece of pipe? How do you get the measurements right? All right, so just for the sake of this video, I have a piece of half inch EMT here, which is a bit roughly about five foot long. Uh, I'm gonna put this right in the middle of this. Now, I don't know guys if you can see it or not, but um, <laughs> this table is pretty bowed, so it's gonna be hard for me to show you in here uh, this straight bend. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bend it in here and I'm going to take it outside on the on a straight concrete and we'll put it over the uh, piece of pipe here to show you. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and put the, the bend right in the middle of this pipe, just, just for, you know, giggles. All right, so right here what we'll do is we'll do this, okay? We'll just put here, let's just say our measurements right there. Now we know we have to go five inches on either side, correct? So what we'll do is we're going to take that mark, that's our center mark, and we're going to put five inches over here. And we'll do five inches this way, which would be 10. 
All right, we can we can double check that and make sure. I'm gonna cut myself an inch, that way it's good. So that's at six, which is actually five because I cut myself an inch. And this one is, cut myself an inch, and about six. All right, now what we need to do is on your bender, this is where you gotta have to start learning how to use your bender and what the marks mean and so on and so forth. So, the center of your bend on this ideal bender is going to be these rim notches right here. That is where you need to put the first mark. So when you put this pipe in here like this, what you'll do is you'll take the mark and you'll put it right there at those rim notches. That's what they call them. All right. Now what will happen next is what you're going to have to do is this. All right. You will pull this first bend down to 45 degrees and leave the pipe in there. So, all right. So you'll pull it down to 45 degrees. That'll be your first bend. And then what you'll do is after you bend it, which I'm going to show you this in a second. I'm just explaining it to you. Let's say you already bent it. So you, now this pipe here is bowed down and this pipe here is bowed down. You'll take it and you'll slide it to your arrow and then you'll bend it to 22 and a half. But I just go to 22. Like I said, I don't know any person. I've only done a few times my whole entire career that you can bend a three-point saddle perfectly the first time. This takes time. You don't do it a lot. And I would rather... Like I said, take an extra five minutes, get it right, then to hurry up and do it, have big old dog leg in it, your journeyman gets mad at you, or you get mad at yourself after you look it up and you're like, wow, what a piece of crap. So, without further ado, let's bend this thing. All right. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be doing this on one knee, but I do want to show you guys how easy this is and how pretty it is when it's all said. Okay, here we go. We have the first mark on the rim notches. Now, there is shrink factor, but... Since we're not measuring from a piece of conduit to your obstruction, we're not even going to worry about that. If you guys want me to do a video on that, how to figure out how to do that with the shrink factor, guys, by all means, I will easily do a video on that. But right now, we're only doing this. All right, without further ado, let's bend it. 45, then 22. All right, here we go. Now remember, what we want to do is we want to have this line keep on going parallel with this piece of pipe. All right, as you see, I have... The bend, right? So if I was standing straight up, both sides are 45s, basically. Alright, so what we're going to do next is we're going to, like I mentioned, we're going to take it and we're going to slide it to the arrow. Alright, and what we have to do, when we get it there, we're going to have to spin it up. And like, there's an arrow on both sides of this pipe. Now what you're going to do is you're going to have to slide down this pipe to make sure that this way and that way, right and left, that you are completely level. Now, this is where you need to make sure that you get it as close as possible because this is where the dog leg always gets from me. So, once I bend it to 22, I will look down it again and fix the dog leg because there will be a dog leg. I can almost guarantee it, and I'm okay with that because, like I said, it's easy to fix now. You want to fix it before you get both bends in because it makes it that much harder. All right, let's go. 22. All right. It's about 22 right there. Now, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to look down here and make sure that everything is going fairly straight. And just a little, there's just a little dog leg in it. Now, this is the last bend we did, correct? So now you have your 45 and you have your 22. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the whole entire pipe out. So what we'll do is we'll spin it around and we'll put it right here like so. And remember, there's an error on both sides. So sometimes what I'll do, if, it, if the mark was on the opposite side right here, I would just spin it around, put it on the mark and then spin it around. But you really don't have to do all that. Now is the time to sight. All right, that looks good. Let's bend it. We're going to go down to 22. Now, I can already tell you, if you look at this, it looks cattywampus, but that's okay because now's the time to fix it. So what you need to do right now, as you can see, it's going uphill right there. Now, obviously it's going uphill a little bit more because of this, but I already know it's going uphill because it always does for me. So what you have to do is you have to, it looks like it's going up. So you have to take this bend back or right in the middle, whatever is easiest for you. I would almost prefer you take the bend out of here because this one over here, this side right here, looks good. So what we'll do is we'll just put it back in there. And it really, it does matter, but it doesn't matter. Um, unless you're in the Taj Mahal, then it would really matter. But you can put it 
really any way you want back in the bender. As long as you get the center of your bend kind of right in the middle of the shoe. Because you're not taking out like a whole bunch. You're just barely, and a little bit goes a long way. So that's probably, I mean, I barely did anything. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're a little closer. All right, now that looks pretty good. All right, so what I like to do is go to a wall and make sure it looks good or a flat surface like I mentioned before. And what we'll do is we'll put it up against the wall. It looks pretty good. There's a little bit of gap, but overall it looks damn good. Uh, you can sight down here and there is no, I mean it looks, I don't know if you can really see in the camera now, but it looks pretty decent. So another way you can lay it on the ground um, on a flat surface and if it looks, you know, all bent up obviously it's not right. So let's take this outside real quick and let's make sure that on the hard ground, this thing will go over top of the obstruction. All right, now that we're out here, let me get my ugly mug back in the frame for a second. Let me show you guys. All right, so this will be your obstruction, correct? Let's say it's going like this. And there you go. It looks pretty, pretty good. And you can see I've got a little bit of room. Like I said, you want a me, a little bit more would have been okay. Usually I have anywhere from a quarter inch up to an inch, but um, half inch for me is usually the magic number. I mean, you can see daylight in there with no problem and it's level both ways. So that's basically all you really need to do. All right guys, there you have it. It's pretty easy to do. Like I said, you know, uh, it just takes practice. What I recommend, like I recommended in the box offset and the offset videos is what you need to do, what I think you should do, if you're really wanting to get this thing down pat is to make sure <laughs> that you watch as many videos and talk to many good electricians as you can. Those electricians that, you know, say that they're great, those are the ones you gotta watch out for. Because if they're tooting their own horn, chances are they're not as great as what you may think. All right, so like I said, your measurements are this. Your first bend goes in the rim notch of your bender. Second, you slide down, you go to the arrow. So it's arrows on both, center or rim notch in the middle, all right? 22, 45, 22. Now there's other variations of this. I mean, I used to bend it on 30s and 15s. It doesn't really matter. 22, 45, or 22 and a half rather, that's what they say, but it's really only 22. I never go 22 and a half. And maybe that's why, maybe that is why I always have to tweak it. Anyway, who knows? But it always works out great, and you saw it out there perfectly, you know. Yes, I did take it off camera a little bit just to tweak it when I was on the wall right here just to make sure that it was level. But like I said, take your time with this, learn how to do it, and when people look at your work, they're like, oh my, this guy knows what he's doing. All right, pretty easy, right? So the next video will be a four-point saddle. Hopefully this haircut will I do something about it. After that will be 90s, kicks, you know, and if you have something special that you guys want to see, by all means, please leave me a comment down below. And if you have any comments about this or anything or any questions, feel free to hit me up. Uh, I'm very confident in conduit bending. And, you know, I feel, I'm not too moan horn like I just mentioned, but I feel that there's no bend that I can't do. I've, all, I've done them all that I know of and even some that aren't really in the textbook. So conduit bending is an art. And like I say, you know, it's really easy to do if you just practice, practice, practice. Take a piece of pipe from a job if, if it's trash. Don't steal pipe, obviously. Or go down and buy you some at Home Depot, Lowe's, or whatever. It's very cheap, very easy to practice with it. And guys, when you go to your next job interview, you can say, yes, I can bend conduit good. Make sure you hit that bell and subscribe to me because the next video, like I say, will be a four-point saddle. And there's going to be a lot of electrical videos this year, like I mentioned before. Uh, all right, if you like what you see, like and subscribe. God bless. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.